Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to ACES GAMS at PIM booklet, Practice Test 3, specifically Unit 1, Questions 1 to 4. And in this unit, we're going to take a look at the cardiac cycle and the flow of blood in the heart. So ACES has provided actually a pretty nice um, flow diagram, or actually a nice uh, picture diagram of the flow of blood in the heart, and um, I mean, you should hopefully have a fair idea of the cardiac cycle before you sit the exam. If you don't, I suggest you do go back and study um, how blood flows through the heart and uh, the different types of, say, um, valves and the different types of um, uh, chambers and just the physiology and anatomy of the heart. Because if you don't, you're going to be severely handicapped for the GAMSA. So I've kind of drawn a very crude diagram of the heart and the blood flow, sorry, in the heart. Um, you can draw your own, but the, the key here is just to understand the key principles of how the blood is flowing through the heart. So some points to consider just before we dive in. Remember, veins, they take blood to the heart. So for example, your superior or inferior uh, vena cava, so they're the uh, veins from the top or the bottom of your, of your body that take the blood towards your heart. Whereas the arteries, they take blood away from the heart. Remember, you've got your aorta. You also have your pulmonary artery. So think about it this way. Pulmonary artery is an artery that's going away from the heart towards the lungs. So think about whether it's going to be deoxygenated or oxygenated. But we'll go through that in a second. And we've been given some information in the stimulus about, um, I guess, systole and diastole. So we're told that ventricular systole is when the heart contracts. So keep in mind when the ventricular, when we're in ventricular systole and the heart is contracting, we're going to have one or the other of these um, valves open or closed. And the same goes for ventricular diastole. So that's in relaxation. So that's when the heart is filling up with blood. So keep that in mind, but we'll go through that in a second. And um, there is additional information for questions three or four. But we'll go through that in a second, uh, I guess, after we answer questions one and two. But it's important to note that there is kind of a trick to answer these questions in a heartbeat. I mean, the biggest trick would be if you actually know uh, the flow of blood in the heart, what is systole, what's diastole, and um, what are these valves control, and the, the um, how the blood is moved around from the different uh, aorta, or say the arteries or the veins. So let's just take a look at my very crude drawing here of the cardiac cycle. So let's say our blood comes in from the superior or the inferior vena cava, so through the veins, so their veins, towards our heart. So you can see in ACES image that um, the blood is going to go and sit inside, firstly, the right atrium. If we just go through a one-dimensional from A to B, because I know it can happen simultaneously from right ventricle and left ventricle, but let's just say the heart is empty now, no blood. So the blood's going to come in from the veins, go into the right atrium, and then if it's diastole, so if it's ventricular diastole, where is it's relaxation, the tricuspid valve would be open, the pulmonary valve would be closed, and when the tricuspid valve is open, it's going to facilitate the blood just filling up into the right ventricle, and this is when it's just the diastole period where it's relaxed, so just filling up blood in the ventricle. So when we go through a systole, so when the heart contracts, the tricuspid valve would be closed, but the pulmonary valve would be open. And what that means is we're going to eject our blood so from our right ventricle. So keep in mind, remember, if the blood is coming from the veins, so it's coming back from the system, it's going to be low in oxygen. So we're going to be pumping our blood through the pulmonary valve towards our lungs. So it's going to be through the pulmonary valve into our, remember, blood going away from the heart. That's a artery, so it's going to be our pulmonary artery. Don't get confused. So it's going to be blood's going to be ejected through our pulmonary artery towards our heart, and I think it's shown there in P um, in ACEs diagram. And then when it goes to the lungs, it's going to come back. So it's going to come back through it's through R. You can see the diagram from ACEs um, figure. It's going to come back through R, and it's going to come back through the pulmonary vein because remember blood goes to the heart from a vein takes blood to the heart but that's going to be oxygenated blood because we've just went to the lungs picked up some oxygen in our blood and now we're going back into our left ventricle or into the left atrium first 
And then if we're going to have our ventricular diastole, the mitral valve will be open, aortic valve will be closed, blood's going to fill up in the ventricle. And then if we're going to have ventricular diastole, uh, systole, mitral valve will close, aortic valve will open, we're going to eject our blood into the aorta. Remember, aorta is, or arteries, are take blood away from the heart, and it's going to go into systemic circulation. So that's pretty much the idea of blood flow in the heart. You can draw your own diagrams. You can think of any way to memorize this. But I mean, if you think of it logically and through a systematic, if you take a systematic approach, you won't have to rely on the figure in the, uh, the ASA provides. Because if, if you rely on the figure that ASA provides, you, you're wasting time. So if we take a look at question one, it says, which of the four valves are open during ventricular systole? So remember, systole is contraction. So we want to eject blood from the, say, right ventricle and left ventricle. If it's happening simultaneously, we know that our tricuspid valves have to be closed and our pulmonary valves are going to be, pulmonary and aortic valves are going to be open to facilitate the contraction of our blood into the respective aorta, whether it's going to be the pulmonary artery or the um, aorta itself. So that means if you took a look at the options in question one, the answer has to be the aortic and pulmonary valves only. So the answer is B. So question two, similar ideas to what we spoke about. Um, which vessels carry oxygen out of blood? Remember, um, if we take a look at, I guess, figure one that ACE has provided, if we're going to take blood, so blood comes from the veins into the right ventricle, it's still deoxygenated here. It's going to be released through the pulmonary artery away from the heart. So pulmonary artery, so I think an ACEs image is going to be P. It's going to go to the lungs. Then it's going to come back through R, oxygenated. So in figure one of ACEs diagram, R is going to be oxygenated because it just came back from the lungs. And Q is also going to be oxygenated because that's the aorta, right? So we're going to take our oxygenated blood to the system. So it's for systemic circulation. So the answer for two therefore has to be D, Q and R. Now, if we take a look at questions three and four, there's a, there's a bit of a trick here. You don't have to read all of that text. In the GAMSA, again, you want to save time. You want to be smart about this. You have to be able to deduce what is the important information and what isn't. The quickest way is take a glance at question three and four. Question three is um, uh, concerning aortic regurgitation. Whereas question four is concerning the sounds of the heart. So if we take a look then at the stimulus that's provided, the additional information, we can see that um, for aortic regurgitation, uh, that's going to be dot point three. For sounds of the heart, it's going to be dot point four. So let's focus on dot point three and four. And in the table, we're going to be looking at aortic regurgitation. So just the third um, uh, row if you want to put, put it that way. So the third row, aortic regurgitation. So we'll focus on those three points, and then we can answer the following question. So question three says, which of the following is most likely to represent aortic regurgitation? So in figure two. So if we think about it logically here, it says in the table one, aortic regurgitation is when the valve doesn't fully close, so blood flows back through the valve. So let's say the aortic regurgitation, so the aortic valve, this doesn't close, so blood's going to flow back, in, flow back into here. So that's what it's telling us. We're told in the dot points that a stripped, a striped rectangle represents sound related to the shutting of the aortic valve. And we're told in aortic regurgitation, the valve doesn't close. So therefore, we shouldn't see a striped rectangle. So if we see a striped rectangle, that means it's not going to be already regurgitation. So straight away, you know the answer has to be B. But if we take a closer look as well, we can see that there's going to be these striped lines in the diastole period of figure two, right after the pulmonary, um, uh, the shutting of the pulmonary valve. So normally you'd have shutting of both aortic and pulmonary, but we're just shown that there is a shutting of pulmonary in the uh, Roman numeral two. So we're seeing these sounds, and that's obvious because we, if we look at dot point four, it says that you shouldn't see these sounds in a normal functioning heart. If you look at figure two again, look at the bottom for normal, there are these sounds don't exist. 
So you shouldn't see these sounds. And it's obviously telling you the reason why we're seeing these sounds is because the aortic valve is not closing properly because of aortic regurgitation. So that's why our answer is going to be B. So then if we take a look at question four, then it's kind of the same principle. It says the thin vertical lines during ventricular diastole. So diastole is when the, um, uh, the heart obviously is going to be relaxed. So we're filling up the ventricles. So uh, which figure is going to correspond to? So the thin vertical lines during ventricular diastole correspond to what? So it says A, so questions A and B or options A and B say um, ventricular contraction and contraction of the atria. That's incorrect because if you read dot point four in the uh, additional information, it says that that's normal. So you shouldn't hear a so you shouldn't hear a sound. You shouldn't see these lines. So um, it says there that less pronounced sounds of the lower pitch are represented by thin vertical lines. Um, normally, the aortic valve closes before the pulmonary valve, and the sounds to these vertical lines are absent or minimal. So therefore, A and B has to be incorrect because we're just told you're not going to see any lines. So C says blood flowing from the ventricles into the atria. That's not true because if we're in diastole, ventricular diastole, where we're filling blood in here, the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve should be closed. If we're gonna, if they're open, that means we're gonna get obviously regurgitation or just backflow of blood back into the ventricle, so into the heart, not into the atria. So you're going to get um, back into the actual ventricle. So the blood's going to come back here. Because remember, the arteries, so the pulmonary artery and the, uh, the aorta, they're going to be, um, the blood is going to be in them, but if the valves aren't closed properly, you're going to get blood coming back into the ventricles. So that's why you're getting this noise, so the thin vertical lines. It kind of goes back to question three, same principle. So the answer has to be D because the blood is going back into the ventricles, not into the atria. So the atria is the first bit. That's not going to be it. It's going from the arteries into the ventricles. So therefore, the answer is D. So if you're still having difficulty um, trying to conceptualize what's happening here, what you can do is you can, I guess, go back, um, look at the cardiac cycle, the physiology behind the blood uh, how blood is flowing through the heart, uh, the direction of the blood. And um, if you're still finding it difficult, you can pop your questions in the comment section below or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.